All right, guys, so this is the uh, last video in the GI series. It talks about the story of the hepatitis B mainly. Um, again, try to answer the questions before I actually explain them. I think the first one's really good, um, and then the last one's kind of a review of the, of the previous previous video, but um, I think it kind of covers the topic hopefully well, and uh, appreciate your feedback, and don't forget to subscribe if you like the videos. All right, guys, so it says a 42-year-old man comes to the physician because of anorexia, fatigue, dark urine, and upper abdominal discomfort. His temperature is 37.9, 100.2 Fahrenheit. Physical examination shows scleral icterus and moderate right upper quadrant tenderness. The liver is palpable below the right costal margin. Laboratory studies <clears throat> show the following. And, of course, you got the surface antigen, surface antibody, um, the core antibody, IgM, and then the E antigen, okay? So you know they're talking about really hepatitis uh, B at this point. It says, which of the following is the most likely change in his serological findings when the patient enters the window period? So really what they're testing you on here is, do you understand the whole role of hepatitis B as it goes through the acute phase, um, uh, through the chronic, or even the Im immunized uh, version of it? So let's just review this before we come back to this, but take a, take a look at this problem. This is actually a good good problem I've, I've seen, um, and see if you can get the correct answer. So you put it on pause, get it, because there's a, there's a, there's a trick to this, and I think there's a good learning, learning point to make sure you don't mess up on your exam. So to review, again, this is hepatitis B, and that's the one on step, really on your step exams that they're going to test for. And it goes through several phases. It goes through an acute phase, it goes through a window period, which is the um, the one that they're asking for here, there's a healed phase, um, there's a chronic hep B, okay, and then there's the immunized. And so you have to understand through these phases, what do these markers look like? And so the, you have this thing called the surface antigen, okay, and the antigen just like, okay, there's the bad guy coming in. Uh, you have the surface, I'm um, sorry, the E antigen. It's more like a, one of those secondary core antibodies. Uh, well, core, it hits the core. I, mean, just, I just leave it at that. So you have the surface antigen, you have the E antigen, you have the core antibody, and then you have the surface antibody. Okay? And if you know these four with this period, You'll get everything right when it comes to hepatitis B, but there's a there's a trick to this uh, deal that even I almost kind of fell for it. So to think about this, in the acute phase, when things just start out, you have this cell, and all of a sudden there's this antigen on it, right? There's the bad guy on the cell. Uh, that's the first thing that goes up. Now, if you were looking at the um, as a you know, if you were looking at a timeline. You know, the first thing that's going to rise up is going to be that E, is that uh, surface antigen. Then you have this thing called the E antigen, okay? And what I want you to know about that is, you know, as that surface antigen comes up and hits that peak, and then eventually he's going to kind of die on down, okay? And when this surface antigen dies down, that's the beginning of this window period, okay? But your big take-home point, I want you to, and, and hear me loud and clear here, is this E antigen falls underneath him, okay? So he goes up and comes down within that, before the window period begins, right? So this is our E antigen. And again, we're just in the acute phase right now, okay? We're just in this, uh, this whole acute phase right there. So... The core antibody at that phase, the core antibody says, look, the any time that you can get something in the core, that means you must have been infected. You must have had some type of disease process or something attack you, virus, to get the core antibody. Now, the core antibody in this guy is going to be IgM because we know that IgM means acute, and we know that IgG, we're going to think chronic, okay? So right now, again, we're in the acute phase of hepatitis B. We got a surface antigen, the first guy to go up. We got this E antigen, kind of shows the kind of viral replication, how much activity there is. He goes up kind of underneath him, you know, he goes up, but he'll start to come down um, as the 
uh, surface antigen also decreases. But during this time, you're going to have what's called the core antibody form because there's a, the real deal was there, and it's IgM because, well, it's acute. Now, is there a surface antibody yet? Haven't had enough time, so he's not there. As we move into this window period, okay, when we move into the window period, the surface antigen, gone, right? The E antigen, he's been gone a while, right? He's been gone a while, so he, he's not even a factor in this guy. Uh, the core antibody, he is the one that's still there. And it's still early on, right? We haven't had enough time to give us an IgG, so he's still going to be IgM, okay? And here we are in this little deal right here. Here's our window phase. The only thing you're going to be seeing in there is a core antibody, IgM, okay? And there's some other little things, like you could say this E antigen has an antibody that kind of comes up you know, et cetera, et cetera. But for our purposes right now, I just want you to know in the window period, all you see is a core IgM antibody. Is there a surface antibody in the window period? Not yet, hasn't been enough time. Now, when we moved into this healed phase, right? When things start to get, you know, as, as they say, healed or whatnot, am I gonna have a surface antigen? No, he's already gone. Is the E antigen present? No, E, e antigen's been gone for now for a while, okay? There's no viral repl replication uh, going on, per se, uh, to that level. Uh, now, it's healed. So is my core, is my core antibody going to be IgM? Well, if it's healed or resolved, it's going to be IgG, right? Because that means it's been chronic. And then, do I have a surface antibody if it's healed? You betcha. And so my surface antibody is going to be IgG, okay? IgG. So think about that. If I'm healed from having an from having an infection, hepatitis B, what am I going to have? I'm going to have a core IgG antibody, and I'm going to have a surface IgG antibody. That's very important. Okay. Now, if I have chronic hepatitis B, chronic meaning greater than six months, what do I got? Well, chronic just means I stay. I stay with my surface antigen, he's still present. I still got my E antigen, he's still giving me all this virus stuff, except now it's been so long that I developed an IgG, okay? And I'm still not protected yet because it's chronic, right? Chronic hep B, I'm still not protected, so there's no surface antibody. The last thing you need to know is what it looks like when you're immunized, okay? Let's just say you're immunized without ever being infected. So I never had the surface antigen, I never had the, the opportunity to have an E antigen because I was never infected. Would I have a core antibody? Now think about that. Remember, we said the only time you're going to get a core antibody is you had to be infected. If I'm immunized, I was never infected. But with this immunization, what did it give me? It gave me a surface antibody, IgG. Okay? So two real big take-home points here. Notice the difference between what it looks like to be protected. If you're protected because you were infected, you have the IgG surface antibody with the IgG core antibody. If you were protected because you were immunized, you got the surface antibody, but no core antibody. Big difference right there, okay? And the other point, I'm gonna, it's gonna be proven in this little, in the answer choices here. So back to the question, and it says, when the person enters the, first of all, they have a surface antigen positive, okay, boom, surface antibody negative, okay, uh, the core IgM, and then e, uh, e antigen positive. So all they did right here is just describe what? They just described someone in the acute phase. And they say, what does it look like when they go into the window phase? Is it they'll become core antigen, uh, the core antigen positive, um, you know, how, how, how is that? They're, they're, they already got a core Ig, you know, they got the core IgM, so it's not, it's nothing to, you know, that just is kind of worded kind of wrong. So it's, they're not going to become core antigen positive. They're already positive for IgM. He will become uh, I, the core IgG positive. Uh, wait a second. So wait, they're already IgM, so they're not going to become IgG at this stage. Now they become IgG if they hit the healed stage. But they they not going into the window phase or not? Uh, they they remain IgM, which is kind of what we're saying here. Their core their core 
um, antigen positive. He will become E antigen negative. Hmm. Makes you wonder, right? Keep that one in mind. He will become uh, surface antibody positive. Not in this phase, they sure won't. It's coming up in the healed phase, maybe, but it's not going into the window phase, it'd be that. Or is it E? He will become surface antigen negative. Hmm. Surface antigen negative. Okay, well, I like that one. But then, looks like he becomes E antigen negative here, too, right? Which one's the better answer? And this is where the, the take-home point is, and I tried to stress it when I talked about this right here. We said the window period begins when the surface antigen becomes negligible, right? Or, 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 yeah, when, it, when, we, when it's negative. But what happened to the E antigen? He became negative well before that. So moving into the window period, you're not gonna become uh, this E antigen negative. You've already pretty much done that prior because it's under this guy. He was negative back here. So that's why this answer goes away and, um, and the, surface an the surface antigen is the being negative would be the most appropriate answer for this. And then you also start to develop this E uh, antibody and stuff. But the purpose of this is, you know, they're gonna put an answer like this at the top to see if you, if you bite, because you want to, right? You want to, because it does look like it's negative, but it became negative a little bit earlier on that, okay? That's my take on that. But the take home point is you gotta know, the, the, you gotta tell the story of hepatitis B in this scenario, okay? Yeah. This one says, a 22-year-old Caucasian male who works as a healthcare worker in the emergency room has the following lab findings. You know, it, it, you got all this uh, hepatitis A. You got now, now this is all hep B right there. And then you got a little C. Um, so look at the positives. You have the positive hepatitis A IgG. Now, IgM means acute, right? The IgG in the A, C, D, and E, that just means, that's just more recovery. Uh, it means you're protected. It's a protected phase, or a like vaccine or something like that. So anyways, it, it does say you're positive, but that's, that's okay. It's not, nothing that's really bad here. Um, and so you look down through here, the other, the other positive is gonna be that you have a surface antigen antibody, okay, and I, sometimes I hate the way they, these things get worded, but long story short, you've got the antibody to the surface antigen, so what does that look like in hepatitis B? You've got this guy, the IgG. Now, what does this mean? Is it the patient most likely identifies with which of the following? Recovered from HBV infection? Now, wait a second. Well, they got this guy, so they must be protected, but how do I know he did not have hepatitis B infection, because what does he not have? What is he negative on the core? Uh, he's negative, negative core antibody. Yeah, he, he never had the core antibody. If he had the infection and then he got protected that way, he would have the core antibody in there. But this guy does not, so we know it's not him. Is he actively shedding uh, hep A? No, that would be if it was this guy, IgM, so it's not him actively shedding HPV? Well, only way I know that is my look at my E antigen. My E antigen is negative. Uh, well, I should say, not this guy, it's this guy right here. The E antigen is here, okay, he's negative. This one was what we talked about when you got the uh, antibody uh, for that guy going up. So, he's not actively shedding because it's negative, the E antigen's negative. Chronic hepatitis, can't tell from that. Has been vaccinated against HPV? Yes, right? Because he, he's got the IgG with no core antibody. He's been vaccinated. All right. Next one says, 32-year-old uh, Caucasian male with recent onset of unexplained fatigue has the following lab findings. Again, hep A, hep B, and then C. And then, now, hep A has IgM. Okay, well, IgM means acute. And then this, let me see, the only one positive is gonna be this guy, which is the surface antigen antibody. So that's just like the last question. He's got this, well cool. That just means what? The guy was immunized, everything else is negative. So obviously this question is gonna be pertaining to what's going on with hepatitis A here. I got IgM, IgM means acute. So the question on this says, which of these is associated with hepatitis A? 
Is it unprotected sex, accidental needle stick, uh, ate canned foods, shellfish at restaurant, or a recent tattoo? Strictly memory, okay? Now this is the real learning point for the video, but from this is just strictly memory. Unprotected sex, I think uh, B and C. Accidental needle stick, I think Hep B. When you get into residency, they're gonna you know make you do all the Hep B vaccines, draw tighter if you don't have good records. Um, that's what I had to do. Uh, shellfish at restaurant, uh, maybe. And then recent tattoo, I think Hep C. The correct answer is gonna be the shellfish at a restaurant. And I think with that, I think Hepatitis A, or E, um, but in this question it's going to be A, um, as it's the IgM. Something happened, they probably had some uh, shellfish. Okay, strictly memory on that. But the take home point really was do you understand how to interpret this? Now, last question. This is kind of a review from the, the last set of videos. If you, if you see if you can get this one right, real quick. It says, Nine-month-old Caucasian female with history of persistent jaundice, muscle rigidity seizures presents to the pediatrician for exam. Lab findings reveal elevated bilirubin, which the following is the most likely mechanism for the patient's findings. So nine-month-old seizures, bilirubin. You know, you go back and you tell the story. I got unconjugated. It goes into the liver. It goes with UDP, glucuronal transferase, becomes conjugated, okay, has transport out, uh, goes down the track, and so on. So, but in this case, they had too much bilirubin. They're having seizures. So chances are they got too much, too much unconjugated bilirubin. Now, is that because they have a 25% reduction in UDP glucuronal transferase? 50 to 75. Impaired transport? Impaired, impaired, I'm sorry, excuse me. Impaired, impaired transportation of conjugated bilirubin? impaired transport of unconjugated bilirubin or absence of UDP glucuronal transferase. Well, you can tell by this, this person's got kernicterus. And so this UDP glucuronal transferase is not working. We have too much unconjugated. So we're not being able to transfer it down. Um, and therefore, it's an absence, OK? Uh, what is this? This is called Krigler Najjar, OK? All this was just kind of smoke and mirrors. Twenty-five percent reduction. I just made. I just made those numbers up. Um, you know, there are there. You know, it, it's it's total absence. Impaired transportation of conjugated bilirubin. Um, you know, again, if it had the reduction ones, you know, you might be seeing the yellow eyes. But when you're nine months and having seizures, it's total absence. Impaired transport of conjugated. No, we really didn't talk about that one as much. Impaired transport of unconjugated, well, we know that one because that one's known as Dubin-Johnson's right there, right? Dubin-Johnson, you think the dark liver, something's got to be in there that says dark liver uh, or black liver and such. Okay, so again, what you got to know, or what you have to know is go back to this one right here. You got to know how to tell the story, guys. And if you can tell the story and be aware of these little tricks or whatever that they're going to try to fool on you, I think you'll do just fine, but you gotta know how to interpret hepatitis B for that step one. So, hope it was helpful.